I'm Matt Pichard with REIT.com here in Washington, D.C. for NARIT's Washington Leadership Forum. Joining me today is Eric Bolton, the Chairman and CEO of MAA. Eric, thanks so much for joining us today. Glad to do it. Thank you. Uh, well, I think the logical place to start is with last October's merger uh, with Colonial Properties. Can you tell us a little bit about when you fully expect to see the, the two, two companies fully intertwined and when you expect to see the synergies from that deal? Well, the process is going very well. We're uh, well into the integration of the back office and systems uh, activities. Uh, we expect to have uh, most all the systems uh, complete uh, by the time we get to late spring, early summer. Property management software is uh, the biggest uh, step that we're taking. Uh, but uh, given the high degree of familiarity that both companies had with each other, the almost identical footprint that we had, a lot of degree of uh, awareness of their properties uh, and so forth. Uh, the process is, um, is, is gone very smoothly. Uh, there wasn't a, a steep learning curve associated with the integration and uh, we fully expect to have everything up and uh, running on both systems and platforms by, as I say, uh, early summer. The synergy uh, component, will, uh, we're already realizing some of the synergies right now in early 2014. By the time we get to the, uh, towards the end of this year, 2014, we really expect the run rate of uh, our, our aggregate overhead expenses to be at the level that <coughs> we had forecast uh, when we were looking at uh, putting the two companies together, such that by, for really calendar year 2015, we really expect uh, that to be the year where we're fully harvesting really all the synergy out of uh, combining the two companies at that time. So. so looking at 2015, how would you say MAA is going to be a better position company post deal, post all the integration? Well, really there are two things that, um, that I would point to that really uh, compelled us uh, to, to do this, uh, this merger. One is really um, on the sort of the internal growth prospects of uh, the company. Uh, I really believe that as a consequence of putting the two companies together, that we truly are going to create an opportunity to drive organic or internal earnings growth at a, at a higher level than what each company was able to do on a standalone basis. Uh, Colonial brought a slightly newer portfolio uh, to the merger, um, slightly higher concentration in some larger markets, larger tier markets. Uh, that fit very uh, well with, with what we had already. And on a blended basis, uh, <clears throat> we feel like we've got a more dynamic uh, group of markets and a more dynamic group of properties that particularly on an AFFO basis after CapEx, that we're gonna have a much uh, uh, higher level of robust earnings growth um, you know, opportunity as a result of the merger. And of course, there's also just the scale benefits and the opportunity to uh, rework a number of uh, you know, various uh, services and contracts that we buy uh, outside the company and given the scale and the size that we're now uh, negotiating in terms of, of buying power, there's gonna be some benefits to be captured there. The second thing I would point to is really the balance sheet. Um, we really believe that uh, you know, both companies uh, had investment grade ratings. Uh, Colonial brought a higher percent of unencumbered assets into the merger. We brought a slightly uh, uh, higher level of earnings coverage and, and, and various credit metrics to the relationship on a combined basis. We have a very, um, we feel, strong balance sheet. Uh, of course, there's more liquidity, um, both in the stock and in the, uh, the public bonds that we've got outstanding as a consequence of uh, putting the two companies together. And so just the, the enhanced uh, credit metrics coupled with uh, more liquidity uh, for the uh, MAA paper in the capital markets, we think over time, likewise, is going to create you know, a stronger platform moving forward. And your company really focuses on the Sun Belt region. What do you think makes that such an attractive market, say, over the next five years for an apartment company like yours? Well, we really like the dynamics of the Sunbelt region, uh, primarily because of the uh, job growth prospects, population, ultimately demand for our product. Uh, we really believe that this region of the country is going to continue to uh, drive you know, higher levels of, of job growth um, than other regions and other markets uh, broadly uh, throughout the, the country. And, uh, and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, we believe that that's what really matters is, is being in a position where we can uh, deploy our capital in uh, apartment real estate where we expect the demand over a long period of time to be pretty healthy. Of course, one of the challenges of the region that is often commented on is, is the low barriers for supply and uh, easier to build, if you will. And uh, we feel like that there are things that we can do to help mitigate some of that risk. We can't eliminate it, uh, but we feel like there are things we can do through diversification of markets, through the scale now we have and the operating capabilities that we have, uh, the way we approach development. There are various things that we can do, we feel like, to help mitigate some of that risk. And on balance, over a long period of time, 
we feel like that uh, the region offers us the performance dynamics that ultimately uh, creates the opportunity for us to drive performance for shareholders that uh, really is what we think the, in, enabled us to continue to keep a steady and secure growing dividend that we really think is an important uh, component of, of the REIT model. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. You bet. Glad to do it. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. Mm -hmm.